Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to be together for worshipping God. Yes, some of us are in the church building, some are at home, some might even be watching this whilst on holiday or out walking the dog. But we all belong as one family of God and so together we create a worshipping community. If you can make it to the church building, it would be great to see you there next Sunday. Don't stay away any longer than you need to. We've made sure that everything is as safe as possible and we run a tight ship. The creche is up and running, Jigsaw, Epic and Crossover are meeting in person and worshipping there together in person is to be encouraged. So do come if you possibly can. Phone to book your place. Thanks to all who came along to TIFF taking it further last Sunday. We had great discussion and it was a good opportunity to talk about what we'd been thinking and learning about in the book of James. Make sure you get along to the next one. It will be held on the first Sunday in November and we'll be thinking about Job. Time to pray is going well. The new structure allows for easy coming and going. And um, some folks put that to the test last week, coming for the first part and then heading out to the guild. So why don't you try it? We meet at 7.15 till 7.55 every Wednesday at the church centre. And it's very definitely come when you can and leave when you must. I want to give you advance notice of a Go Mad Extra that's happening on Sunday the 24th of October. And that's two weeks from today. It's taking place right after lunch. So we'd love it if all of our Jigsaw kids were there at the service, out for Jigsaw and then bring a picnic for after the service. And we can eat together and be ready for Go Mad starting. And that applies to any of our helpers from Epic and Crossover who are going to be there and to all of the adult team. Let's eat together and then do go mad. A huge thank you to everyone who made a prayer boat for COP26. We reached our target of 100 boats and we want to add hundreds of prayers to those boats that the world decision makers who gather in Glasgow next month would be brave enough to bring about change. Thank you to everyone who sent in spotty pictures. You're going to see those during our service. For next week, we need pictures of you with something that protects you in a storm. A waterproof jacket, an umbrella, your wellies, a hat. Get them sent in. For now, it's time for us to worship together, to listen for God's voice, to bring him our very best and to seek his face. So let's worship God. We're going to be led in our worship by Alison and the rest of the band. And I encourage you at home to sing along as we bring our praise to our Lord Jesus Christ and sing together in Christ alone.
The response says, pardon our unbelief. Lord, we believe, pardon our unbelief. Let us pray. Loving God, in the words of our opening hymn, we declare that in Christ alone our hope is found. He is our light, our strength, our song. Lord, we believe, pardon our unbelief. You are the cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. You are our comforter, our all in all. Lord, we believe, pardon our unbelief. Like Job, we struggle. Like Job, we ask questions. Like Job, we search for answers. Like Job, we cry to you in despair and sometimes in disbelief. Lord, we believe, pardon our belief. Forgive us, Lord, for our lack of trust. So often we forget that no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck us from your hand. We forget that you are God. We forget that you are the rock of ages where we can hide. The Father who loves us unconditionally, the God who gave his Son for our salvation. Lord, we believe, pardon our unbelief. Open our eyes to see your glory. Open our ears to hear your wisdom. Open our mouths to sing your praise. And hear us as we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome to today's quiz. It's called Well Spotted and I'm asking if you can identify these magnificent creatures. All of them have spots. Here's the first one. What is this creature? And if you said hyena, then you have got your first point. Well done. Here's number two. And that is, of course, a ladybird. And so you may be up to two out of two. Here's number three. Yes, it's a dog, but what kind of dog? A Dalmatian. And there might be another hundred around if you look closely enough. Here's a horse. But does anybody know what kind of horse it is? I wonder if any of you said Appaloosa. And if you did, you've just got yourself. A fourth point. Here's a cat. A big cat. What kind of big cat is this? I hope you recognised it as a leopard. And here's a fish. But do you know what kind of fish it is? This magnificent fish is a spotted scat. And look at the spots on this bird. What kind of bird is that? Did you say peacock straight away? If so, well done. We're on to another cat. What kind is this? Not a leopard this time. Indeed it is. A cheetah. Well done, everybody. We're on to our ninth animal. I wonder if you see this one straight away. Yes, it's a giraffe. And uh, some giraffes have got bigger patches, spots, hexagons than others. But they're still spotty. Here's another spotty animal. Did you recognise this as a salamander? If so, you've just earned your next point. And that's us seen 10 creatures. Here's an 11th. Yes, it's a butterfly. But did any of you say 
that it's a speckled wood butterfly. If so, you've got another point. I wonder if any of you have got 11 out of 11. Can you get to 12? This is our final one. Who's this creature? Do you remember Job from last week? That's right, we left him covered in spots. That's not how the story began, of course, with Job. At the beginning, he was a good, healthy, wealthy man who had oxen and donkeys and cattle and sheep and camels and sons and daughters. And then all of them were taken away. And he was given boils from the soles of his feet to the top of his head instead. And yet still, Job found reason to praise God. Eventually, he began to feel sad and upset. And three of his friends came and sat beside him. And they were also sad and upset at what was happening to their friend. They sat beside him. And they kept him company. And they didn't say anything. They were just there. That's a really important thing to do. But eventually they got a bit frustrated with Job. And so they started to ask him questions. And they asked him if actually he'd maybe done some really horrible things secretly that they didn't know about, but God did know about. And so God was punishing him. And it was nonsense. Job hadn't done anything horrible. He hadn't done anything that was secretly nasty. The friends were asking all the wrong kinds of questions. And they wanted Job to ask big questions of God. Not big questions like, where does the sun go when it's dark? Or why don't we eat ice cream for breakfast? Or... Why can't I see my eyes? Or have you ever thought of asking an adult, what did it feel like on your last day of being a child? No, those were not the kind of big questions that were being asked in the book of Job. They were asking big questions of God and how he could let Job go through such horrible, horrible suffering. Job had lots of questions for God. Big questions. But he didn't know how to take them to God. And so instead he said things like, It's not fair. God has no right to treat me like this. God makes my heart sink. I'm completely in the dark. And that was okay. Because God heard Job saying those things too. And God cared. And God was going to make a difference. And when we can't think of the right thing to say, We just need to be honest and say what we're feeling to God. And he cares for us. He listens and he promises he'll be with us and that he'll never let us go. So let's sing about that just now. Nothing's too big for God's power. Nothing's too small for his care because he cares for everything. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too little, little for his care. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too tiddly, little for his care. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too insy, insy for his care. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too teeny, weeny for his care. He is.
from Job 23 verses 1 through 17. I'm not letting up, I'm standing my ground. My complaint is legitimate. God has no right to treat me like this. It isn't fair. If I knew where on earth to find him, I'd go straight to him. I'd lay my case before him face to face. Give him all my arguments first hand. I'd find out exactly what he's thinking, discover what's going on in his head. Do you think he'd dismiss me or bully me? No, he'd take me seriously. He'd see a straight living man standing before him. My judge would acquit me for good of all charges. I travel east looking for him. I find no one. Then west, but not a trace. I go north but he's hidden his tracks, then south, but not even a glimpse. But he knows where I am and what I've done. He can cross-examine me all he wants, and I'll pass the test with honours. I've followed him closely, my feet in his footprints, not once swerving from his way. I've obeyed every word he's spoken, and not just obeyed his advice. I've treasured it. But he is singular, and sovereign. Who can argue with him? He does what he wants, when he wants to. He'll complete in detail what he's decided about me, and whatever else he determines to do. Is it any wonder that I dread meeting him? Whenever I think about it, I get scared all over again. God makes my heart sink. God Almighty gives me the shudders. I'm completely in the dark. I can't see my hand in front of my face. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hello, I'm Mrs Job. Now, you're not told my first name, but that's not unusual, is it, in biblical literature? Mrs Job will be fine. I'm pictured here doing what I'm famous for, telling my husband to curse God and die. Oh, the suffering of Job. My beloved Job. He's lost everything. His whole livelihood is in tatters, and our ten children are taken from us. Now he's covered in these awful boils. His friends, of course, think he's been up to no good. He must have sinned. 
We all thought that way. Bad things happen to bad people. But believe you me, Job was no Mr. Mischief. He was a good man through and through. And so here he is, scraping these sores with a broken piece of pottery, feeling sorry for himself, of course. What have I done to deserve this, he asks. And he knows he's done nothing, nothing at all to deserve this. So I tell him to curse God and die. Well, can you blame me? You see, I've been through hell too. I've lost everything, everything, including the ten children I once carried in my womb, my babies, my beloved children to whom I've given my life. I need a hug. I need someone to talk to. But Job, he sits in ashes oblivious to my needs, my grief, my God-forsakenness. Curse God and die. Yes, I've lost everything, including my husband, it seems. It would be many centuries later that John Donne would write these famous words. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. And therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Oh, yes, and the bell has tolled for me. I suffer in silence, apart from that terrible outburst, of course, while Job sits on his ashes and bemoans what's happened to himself, and only himself. I've been looking for paintings that depict our situation. There aren't very many. I've come across one by a French artist, and I'd like to share it with you now. It's a painting by Leon Bona. Looking at this painting, look for three things. Look at Job's suffering, his nakedness. Look at his sincerity, his open hands. Look at his stability. The whole painting is in the shape of a triangle. Three S's. Suffering, sincerity, stability. First of all, suffering. The artist depicts our suffering with nakedness. When we suffer, we're laid bare. When we suffer, we are stripped of everything. This was a kind of Gethsemane for us. The kind of suffering that Jesus himself would go through. Suffering, perhaps, that you have gone through as well. Suffering that many of our brothers and sisters endure daily. Secondly, sincerity. The artist depicts Job's sincerity with his open and empty hands. It reminds me of the words of a hymn that you sing. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless come to thee for grace. You know, sometimes we're not sincere before God. The book of Psalms is a prayer book and it's full of laments, telling God how we're really feeling, being angry with God, disappointed with God, shouting at him, it's not fair, God. 
Curse God and die, I shouted. I think God understood, don't you? And thirdly, stability. The triangle shape is stability. In spite of everything, God was there. Of course he was, just as he was with Jesus on the cross. The hidden love of God, whose height, whose depth, no one knows. The rock to which we are fastened. The rock that does not move. So, thanks to Lee and Donna for this painting of Job. Remember his suffering and mine. Remember his sincerity. Can you be just as honest with God? Do you know the language of lament? And remember his stability. As we said in our opening hymn, God is our cornerstone, the rock of our salvation. And finally, a quote from the songwriter Michael Card. You and I were created to wake up in a garden. Instead, we open our eyes each morning to a fallen wilderness, a world where our omnipresent God seems disturbingly absent. God transforms us and leads us by his grace into a pathway back to his presence. This path is found in the language of lament. Out of the depths I cry to you In darkest places I will call Incline your ear to me and you And hear my cry for mercy, Lord Were you to count my sinful ways How could I come before your throne Yet full forgiveness meets my gaze I stand redeemed by grace alone I will wait for you I will wait for you On your word I will rely I will wait for you Surely wait for you Till my soul satisfied So put your hope in God alone Take courage in His part to save Completely and forever one by Christ emerging from the grave I will wait for you I will wait for you On your word I will rely I will wait for you Surely wait for you Till my soul is satisfied come to make a way and God himself has paid the price that all who trust in him today find healing in his sacrifice I will wait for you I will wait for you through the storm and through the night I will for you, surely wait for you, for your love is my delight. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Lord, shine through our darkness as we make this offering in Jesus' name. Amen.
The response is, our faithful God. You are our way in the wilderness, our faithful God. Let us pray. Dear God, you rejoice with those who rejoice, you mourn with those who mourn, and you call us to do the same. Help us to come to you today with honesty and openness, sharing our sorrows and knowing you comfort. You are our way into the wilderness, our faithful God. We are sad because some people feel forgotten and unseen. May they know that they are remembered and seen by you, God. Help us to partner with you to remember the forgotten. Search our hearts to reveal those we hide our faces from, the outcast, the stranger or the homeless. Change our hearts that we may turn our faces towards those people and see them as your beloved children. You are our way in the wilderness, our faithful God. We worry about COVID, about our National Health Service. We fear for those who are sick, for all who are affected by the cuts in universal credit. How long, O oh Lord, must the poor suffer? How long before our brothers and sisters everywhere have access to clean water and vaccines? How long, O oh Lord? You are our way in the wilderness, our faithful God. We are concerned for the planet. Our prayer boats remind us that we are all caught up in a storm, but we are not all in the same boat. We think of our brothers and sisters who suffer more than we do. We worry about COP26, about security in our beloved Glasgow and about all the delegates who will travel here. What can we do in the fight against climate change? You are our way in the wilderness, our faithful God. Loving God, how can we be like Job who never stopped trusting you? You are our way in the wilderness, our faithful God. Amen. of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said? You who want to Jesus for refuge have fled.
And so, like Job, may you and I be truly honest with God. Bitterness will become forgiveness. Apathy will become action. Cynicism will become enthusiasm. Honesty with God will transform your life and mine. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Oh, Jesus Christ.